In this video, we're going to look at some examples where we have to classify critical numbers and sketch some graphs. In our first example, we're asked to classify the critical numbers of the function f of x equals x plus sine of x. Remember that classify the critical numbers mean, means tell if each critical number corresponds to a local max, a local min, or neither a local max nor a local min. So we'll take the derivative and set that equal to zero and look at the solutions. <clears throat> that would be the solutions of cosine of x equals negative one, which is when cosine equals pi but then since cosine is periodic, we can add any integer multiple of two pi. So we have infinitely many critical numbers. Maybe we'd like to try to use the second derivative test to classify those critical numbers. So I take the derivative of the derivative, I get negative sine of x, but I find that if I take sine of any integer multiple of pi, I'm going to get zero. So um, the second derivative at the critical numbers is all zero and no conclusion can be made from the second derivative test. Just fine, let's go to the first derivative test. So I've drawn a number line and on my number line, I have all of the critical numbers or a sample of the critical numbers since there's infinitely many, but there's enough critical numbers for me to see any patterns. Now, all of these critical numbers are the type where the first derivative is zero. So I went ahead and wrote zero above each critical number. And now if I want to find the sign of the derivative between those critical numbers, I really don't have to do a lot of work except make the observation that this uh, first derivative expression, one plus cosine of x can never be zero because cosine of x varies between negative one and positive one. So the smallest this derivative can ever be is zero. Otherwise it's always positive. So I can just put plus signs between each of those. And now let me just look at the patterns. I can see that um, as far as classifying the critical numbers, I go from positive to positive, increasing to increasing, increasing to increasing. So all of the critical numbers neither correspond to a local minima nor to a local maxima. All right, so in our second example, we're asked to find a little bit more information. We want to classify the critical numbers. And we also want to find the intervals of increase and decrease for g of x equals tangent squared of x. So again, I'll start by taking the derivative, remembering to use the chain rule. And I'll set that equal to zero. Now in solving this, I have a product and secant squared of x is never zero. So I really only need to focus on tangent of x. When, what are the zeros of tangent of x? And um, it's gonna be zero whenever sine is zero. So any integer multiple of pi. And again, secant squared of x is never zero. And in fact, is always positive. But when I'm looking for the intervals of increase and decrease, I should also identify any numbers that are not in the domain of the original function. Those are not critical numbers, but they are still important for us to when we're determining the intervals of increase and decrease. So, g of x will be undefined when ever uh, cosine is undefined, and that would be pi over 2 plus any 
integer multiple of pi. So I'm going to draw a number line and I'm going to put on here all of the critical numbers and all of the numbers where the function is undefined. So the critical numbers are the types of numbers where the derivative equals zero. So I went ahead and wrote zero above those. And above the numbers where the function is undefined, I put a star or an asterisk. And now I just need to find out the sign of the derivative. Well, we already noted that secant squared of x is always positive. And so the derivative of a g is going to have the same sign as tangent of x. And let's just remember uh, what the tangent graph looks like or our unit circle. The tangent is positive in the first quadrant and in the third quadrant, and it's negative in the second and the fourth quadrants. So I'm going to have alternating pluses and minuses. And so that tells me a couple of things in terms of classifying the critical numbers. Uh, what would that tell me? That would tell me that in each at each critical number, I'm going down, then up, down, then up, down, then up. So those should all correspond to local minima. Um, where is g of x increasing? Well, it's increasing where tangent is increasing. So um, how can I look at that? 0 to pi over 2, then pi to 3 pi over 2. It starts on an integer multiple of pi, and then uh, it ends pi over 2 radians later. So that is, that's how I can write the intervals where g of x is increasing. Uh, where is it decreasing? Well, from negative 3 pi over 2 to negative pi, negative pi over 2 to 0. So these are ending on integer multiples of pi, and uh, they start at uh, pi over 2 plus an integer multiple of pi. Um, and we already noted that the critical numbers are all local min. Okay, in our last example, we're looking at f of x is the cube root of 1 plus x. We want to find the intervals where f of x is concave up and concave down, and the coordinates of any inflection points, and then sketch the graph. So we're, to help us sketch the graph, we'll use information from both the first derivative and the second derivative. But in order to answer any question about concavity or inflection points, we'll need to use the second derivative. So we'll start by taking the first derivative. We'll change the cube root to a fractional power of one third. And notice that this expression for the first derivative, one over parentheses 1 plus x to the 2 thirds power. That's never 0. However, it is undefined when x equals negative 1. So we do have a critical number at x equals negative 1. But otherwise, this expression is positive. And so the function is increasing. But we're not asked about increasing and decreasing. We're asked about concave up, concave down. So I need to take the second derivative. So using the power rule again, I get negative 2 over 9 in parentheses 1 plus x to the power of 5 thirds. Again, this is never 0, but it is undefined when x equals negative 1. So we need to check to see if the concavity changes to the left of negative 1 from the right of negative 1. 
So we'll make a number line. I'll put negative one in there. I'll go ahead and put an X above that to indicate that uh, the second derivative is undefined at that point. So the concavity may change there. And I, if I just uh, maybe substitute some values or just think about this expression, it has an odd index, it has an odd power. So if this expression in parentheses is negative, if I'm to the left of negative one, it'll be negative on the bottom. It, the top is always negative. So negative over negative will be positive. On the other hand, if the expression on the bottom is positive, the whole expression will be negative. So the concavity does change from positive to negative. So it changes from concave up to concave down when x equals negative 1. So we can say that the function is concave up to the left of negative 1, so from negative infinity to negative 1. And it's concave down to the right of negative 1, so on the interval negative 1 comma infinity. And for our inflection point, we know the x-coordinate is negative 1. We need to find the y-coordinate by going back to the original function and substituting x equals negative 1. And that just gives us y equals 0. So the coordinates of the inflection point are negative 1 comma 0. So I'm going to put that information together with the first derivative information. So we said that f of x is always increasing. And I can say that, OK, the derivative is undefined. I know that uh, as x approaches negative 1 from the left or from the right, uh, the derivative is going to approach positive infinity. So that tells me that I have a vertical tangent line at negative 1 comma 0. So this is, should not be a surprise. We could have sketched the graph just from our knowledge of algebra. If we remembered what the cube root function looks like, this is simply shifted one unit to the left. And so um, we have concave up to the left of negative 1, concave down to the right of negative 1, it's always increasing. And it was a little hard for me to sketch, but at negative 1 comma 0, um, there is a uh, vertical tangent line. And then one more note. Note that when I sketch my graph, I know that the uh, cube root graph is kind of very long. And uh, so I change the scale on the x-axis to being 2 and 4. So each square represented 2 units, whereas each square only represented 1 unit on the y-axis. And let me remember to label those axes before I finish the video.